such a joy to to be in the house of the Lord this blessed afternoon blessed be the name of the Lord this is normally the first opportunity you have to know how your neighbor is doing the second opportunity will come after the service excuse to talk to your neighbor as your phone looks new so the uh, it is new or old then it's a good opportunity to to talk to your neighbor hallelujah i said welcome to church Welcome to church. My sound is breaking. Welcome to church. Mesema karibu kanisani. Hallelujah. Leo karibu kanisani. his house be called a house of prayer unto all nations in the name of Jesus I prophesy in the name of Jesus Christ Crucified International ICBN instructing a country baptizing nations in the name of Jesus Christ from St Petersburg to Kitale apparently in the name of Jesus Christ from Cairo hallelujah to Jos blessed be the name of the Lord from Angola to Canada this is Christ Crucified International instructing a country baptizing nations in other words from your village to here sinisa from your village to right here at best western plus meridian hotel hallelujah are you glad to be here today then show the excitement show the excitement that you actually happy to be in the house of God the Lord gave me a good word for the afternoon and I pray that our spirits will receive it in Jesus name hallelujah God allowed us to be warmly together on Tuesday was it on Tuesday when you're talking about politics faith and politics All right then we that was online on Wednesday we met here and continued with an incredible conversation on the heart then we took a brief recess until today and the lord has been on the throne hallelujah remember we are on all social media platforms when you wake up please find out what we are saying we say something different every day all right check us up find the day's revelation ufunuo mm-hmm. wa siku on tiktok on x i mean x through my friends but just go to x and check out what we are saying cci capital church is on x go to youtube refresh yourself every single day tell any by every day look for the capital utterance tell them look for the capital utterance every day um, hallelujah uh, this is what we are calling deliverance 
from prophetic robbery. Deliverance from prophetic robbery. huru kutoka kwa uwizi wa utabiri deliverance from prophetic law aya kuwekwa huru kutoka uwizi wa utabiri deliverance from prophetic robbery is that a good topic first samuel chapter 23 We are consulting the King James Version. My son, don't give up on my sound. Don't give up. 1 Samuel chapter 23. This is KJV. 1 Samuel chapter 23. Hallelujah. Then they told David saying behold the Philistines fight against Kila and they rob the threshing floors therefore David inquired of the Lord saying shall I go and smite these Philistines and the Lord said unto David go and smite the Philistines and save Kila and David's men said unto him behold we be afraid here in Judah how much more then if we come to Kila against the armies of the Philistines and David inquired of the Lord yet again And the Lord answered him and said arise go down to Kila for I will deliver the Philistines into thine hand so David and his men went to Kila and fought with the Philistines and brought away their cattle and smote them with a great slaughter so David saved the inhabitants of Kila and it came to pass when Abiathar the son of Ahimelech fled to David to Kila that he came down with an ephod in his hand and was told so that David was come to Kila and Saul said God had delivered him into my hand for he is shut in by entering into a town that hath gates and bars and Saul called all the people together to war to go down to Kila to besiege David and his men and David knew that Saul secretly practiced mischief against him and he said to Abiathar the priest bring hither the ephod Then said David, O Lord God of Israel, thy servant hath certainly heard that Saul seeketh to come to Kila to destroy the city for my sake. Will the men of Kila deliver me up into his hand? Will Saul come down as thy servant hath heard? O Lord God, I beseech thee, tell thy servant. And the Lord said he will come down. Then said David, Will the men of Kila deliver me and my men into the hand of Saul? And the Lord said they will deliver thee up. Then David and his men which were about 600 arose and departed out of Kila and went with us however they could go and it was told so that David was escaped from Kila and he forbear to go forth this are my golden pages turn to the book of first samuel chapter 5 if you may the bible says and the philistines took the ark of god and brought it from eben ezer unto ashdod and the philistines took the ark of god they brought it to the house of dagon and set it by dagon and when they of ashdod rose early in the morning behold dagon was fallen upon his face to the earth before the ark of the lord and they took dagon and set him in his place again and when they arose early on the morrow morning behold dagon was fallen upon his face to the ground before the ark of the lord and the head of dagon and both the palms of his hands were cut off upon the threshold only the stump of dagon was left to him he says that and both the palms of his hands were cut off upon the upon the threshold only the stump of dagon was left to him hallelujah Blessed be the name of the Lord. And then now we are told in 
chapter 23 verse 1 that they told David saying behold the Philistines fight against Kila and they rob the threshing they rob the threshing floors right they were stealing from the threshing floors just open your mouth and bless the Lord for what you're about to hear this amazing afternoon just bless him for the word that is coming to you <laughs> hallelujah thank you Jesus for how you're going to help us hear what you are saying <laughs> thank you for anointing our ears to hear what the spirit of the Lord is saying to the churches in the name of Jesus <laughs> is that your right hand of dominion the Psalter said give me understanding that I might learn your commandments this afternoon we ask Lord give us understanding that we might learn in the name of Jesus we need understanding in order to learn we will not attempt to learn without understanding cause us to meditate on these things that we might profit with all in Jesus name we pray amen amen and amen all right deliverance from prophetic robbery now there is a very heinous haste that has been ongoing within the church and within the proclivities of the prophetic for as long as redemption has been on the earth and if we are going to be a voice if we are not already a voice God is going to begin to capacitate us I said if we are not already a voice bonus for kanisa all right god is going to begin to capacitate us to design portals of theft my house right huh? shall be called a house of prayer unto all nations it shall be called a house of prophetic stirrings prayer is stirring prophetic manifestation it shall be called a house of prophetic stirrings it shall be called a house of prayer but you have made it a den of give it to me you have made it a den of you have made it a den of thieves it was supposed to be a dimension of prophetic stirrings prayer is prophetic stirring but he have made it a den of thieves and that's why we must begin to mourn the fact that it is almost a mockery in our generation to talk about a dimension of god called abiathar abiathar the son of ahimelech right that is leaving the slaughter of his fathers the cutting off of the priesthood because it was behind David and backing him to come and join forces with David. Abiathar is a priest but his name means what? Father of abundance. Tell your neighbor father of abundance. Now telling this generation that God is a father of abundance it's almost setting yourself up for needless castigation to tell the generation that god is rich in angels he is able to defend right it's almost ludicrous because you remember all the times you have lost your phone in the cpd and you had to call home you had to tell the people in the village to send you something to buy a new phone why did god defend you if he is the lord as you say of angel armies right they say god answereth prayer why have you been praying for kenya and things are not changing god is the possessor of heaven right and earth if he is a possessor of earth why are christians poor is that so uh, if you are anointed why is it that you don't have this grace and that grace if you are truly loved by god why is it that your gifts are few in number 
why is God not a God of abundance? If you have just come from church, why are you not going to a buffet? Why is it that you are going to the meal that you reserved from yesterday's slaughter? Why is it that you are not going to a buffet to these seven, like the seven sprinklings of the blood in the holiest of all. You are going to seven servings, right? These brown chapatis, white chapatis, minced, diced, I tell you. Drum. Is that so? And the keys. Because if you have a drum set, you must have keys. If God, I tell you, if God is a father of abundance, why is there such a gap? <laughs> I'm prophesying about your experience after the service and you're not perceiving it. That when you walk out of this place, somebody shall tell you, let us go to a buffet. The budget is on me. Hmm? Hallelujah. Hey. Those are the qualifications of being my friend. You must have taken me to a buffet where I handled seven servings. And you keep the friendship going by taking me to such a place, right? To keep invoking. <laughs> yeah? The utterance of goodness. Ebiatha is the priest we are dealing with. And he is a father of abundance. And he is with us. And he has an effort. And he must begin to say something, folks. We must begin to be very audacious in the kind of deductions that we are making from our text this afternoon that a beta is a priest so supply will come because there's a dimension between you and God because a priest is chosen in order to stand between God and men or a priest exists to be a conveyor belt between a source dimension and a receptor Shown dimension, a source dimension, and a reception dimension. A priest exists to stand between, right, a spirit and men, a source dimension and a reception dimension. That is why that dimension of God is a priesthood dimension. Why had it, wow, why had it become such a core issue? in the day of David because if we are going to receive things it is because a dimension received those things a dimension received them then we received them right I want you to see the subtlety of your enemy because he knows that the thing that is coming to you cannot come to you directly it has to pass through a dimension that is the dimension that we called a threshold that is a dimension that is called a threshing floor. A betha, right? Our father of abundance will not just come to David with abundance. He will pass through a priest in order for David to have an abundance. So it means that if the dimension has somebody else, huh, you have something else. If the dimension does not exist, your supply does not exist. If the dimension has been compromised, your reality of God's provision is also greatly undermined. I'm coming to you. I'm on route to you. I tell you. I came to prophesy that if God is rich, you will be rich. It's a decision you'd have to make. Eh? I say it's a decision you'll have to make. I read through the Bible 13 years ago and I said if God is this wise I can't be foolish in my generation if this is the Lord and he's the one that created me I can't be without wisdom it's a, it's a decision there are people who never made that decision and we are with them today and we are with them that time clearly from what they write, from what they say, from how they conduct their lives, you can tell that when they came to the wisdom of God, they never made a decision to also be wise. I'm talking about preachers in my generation. 
I'm talking about preachers that we are with in campus. People that we are supposed to be working together today. Because our year and the year after produced so many pastors there everywhere. But my light is still unapproachable to them. Because it's a decision they did not make. Several years from now, I'm telling you 40 years from now, your life will be because of a wise decision you're going to make. Which will be that you shall not be ignorant of the enemy's devices. Right? Because his house is a house of prophetic stirrings. But they have made it a den of thieves. I tell you. Hmm? I tell you. Are you with me? Are you with me? What was the first audacious claim? That for God to give, he will first give to a dimension. So you must be plugged into a dimension that receives things from God. Secondly, that a beta has an effort that we can use to access God. So it means that you'll not just come to the dimension, you'll come to the disclosures of the dimension. Right? So supply can be there, but if there is no access into supply, we don't have the supply. So if there is a dimension, the effort is the access to the dimension. So we don't just need the dimension, we need access to the dimension. We need an open door into the dimension. And that's why a rich God can have poor Christians. That's why a wealthy father can have very, very derelicted sons. Because though he had, the sons had no access. Though he is a possessor, you have no means to come to that possession. I came to bless you that an effort will be supplied. I say an effort will be supplied in the name of Jesus. You will have to come. I pray you will come. There will be an access to the dimension. A door will open. And that is why they will begin to mock us. You know, we will say that uh -huh, the month of July was a month of ceaseless downpour. I didn't know that we were transitioning at the end of this month. Remember, I told you that me at the end of the month, that's why I normally see, that's when I'm seeing why we had that theme. Because we're actually transitioning. And we need so much in terms of resources, right? So that's why we needed a ceaseless downpour. Because you need this, this month, every household here has a double budget. The rent for your house, the rent for the church. Right? Is that so? Mm. Air time for your house. Air time for the church warden. They are called church wardens. The ones that just stay in the church. Their work is to open the door for those that are coming for prayer. It's your responsibility to ensure that they have air time. Budgets were doubled by the end of this month. That's why I prophesied. Now, they will tell you that, that is just pep talk. Why are you saying that June is a month of this, right? July is a month of this. August is Thursday. We are going to give a prophetic word for August. Why do you keep on saying these things that define seasons? We are working the effort. Because if you can have a word in season, you have an effort into a beta. If you can have, I tell you, a word in season, you can have an effort into a beather. Those are keys. What God has said is an effort into the dimension of his supply. What God has decreed is actually the door into what he has. What God said is the door to what he has. I tell you, what God said over a season is the door to what God has over that season. So you must hear so that you can have access you must be told so that you can be present in the realm of provision. You must receive direction so that you'll end up in supply. Wealth will be hidden until the day of a prophetic pronouncement. The wealth of God will be hidden until the day of a prophetic pronouncement. That is the second audacious thing that we have to say this afternoon. That a beaver has an effort. So that we are here wondering, 
Why is it that God has so much and we have so little? I was like, Lord, like, let's talk. How much spirit do you have? And how much spirit do I have? How much understanding do you have? And how much understanding do I have? In every comparison, at every point, I'm seeing worlds of difference. I'm seeing staggering variations between what God has and what I have. And I need to tell you that God never called you to be his servant. God never called you, right, to be a diaconis. A diaconis. That's why we get the word deacon. Servants that run around at the command of a master. That's not what God called you to be. God called you to be a son. So that as he is in the world, so you are. Right? Is that so? As he is in the world of heaven, so you are in the world of the earth. As he is, so are we in the world. As he is, so are we in the world. And I told you that you are going to be a total person. You are going to be a complete person. That you can pay fair for someone. You can give somebody revelation. You can pray for their healing. Can you imagine? I have so much resources in both grace and life. I tell somebody, I can take you to hospital and you can be treated. Whatever hospital you choose, I'll take you there, you'll be treated. But I can also pray for you. And if I pray for you, you'll also be healed. Those are the kind of dimensions you're talking about. That God has material possessions. He said that cattle on a thousand hills are his. Physical things belong to him. Cattle are physical things. They belong to him. But also grace is also his. Because he came full of grace. A full of grace. So if you come to Jesus, he can take the dust and spit upon it, apply on your eyes, and you shall open your eyes and be able to see. The dust is his, right? Talk to me. He can use to heal you. But he can also pronounce healing on you. Because the supernatural power to heal is also his. That dimension of wealth is what you are talking about. That abietha kind of release. That we are, I tell you, abounding in all things. The man of God said that I have learned how to abound. Oh, I read that scripture. I wanted to sob. I said, Lord, have I learned how to abound? I think me have learned how to be a best. Have I ever learned how to abound? You know what that means, to learn how to abound. Now that you like saying the way Paul was a tent maker, he was a traveling preacher in his itinerancy. He never had much. And what have you, he has learned how to abound. Learning how to abound is, what is the name of that uh, classmate who we are within class seven? The one that was a monitor and used to write my name for noisemakers, that one. Look for him and give him uh, the 50K. Tell him, say, thank you for reporting me to the class teacher. Eh? Man of God, what is your fuel in 2025? Please, this is a blank check, right? I write my figure. Eh? You go to where they are selling iPhones. Just a, is this shop full of iPhones and iPads there? Yeah. Just walk out. Just walk out of the shop. Take this uh, blank check. Just tell me the total of all these phones. So anatoka tu anenda um unengia kwaduka. I have learned how to abound. Oi, I I read that scripture. Eh? Father of, I tell you, Father of abundance. Ati nyumba ikona la ikona lunch na ikona sapa, ikona steamer na maji. In case tokens ishe kuna kaki tu ka kulipa tokens I tell you. na community umewasot. Yani uko tu sawa. Baitele. Uko tu sawa. Mgeni tu akikuja tu that time. 
there is spare food for them. Hmm? That whole weekend you've been doing Ubers, taxis. Eh? Yani unakatu kwa kiti, you just meditate on the goodness of God. By the way, Nani Walisemati is a good spirit. Kuna mtu kwa Bible alisema. Na the Lord is a good spirit. Abarikiwe hata yeye abarikiwe. Mwenye alisema hivyo kwa Bible. Hata yeye I tell you but hata yeye abarikiwe. what we are thinking about then we must think about robbery and theft because you know what huh? hardly have you been within the spectrum of God's will for your provision of life hardly not that he never gives not that he is not a liberal giver as it were just that there is a very systematic robbery in our heavens as a church generation i don't know as a seed of abraham it's so much so honey that i realize that at the end of the day we normally just settle for what is left after thieves have satiated themselves in every quarter of your life as preachers in grace after robbers have come and swept the house we glean what is left is what we use for ministry the people here that are called to finance the kingdom after hagarins have taken their share after downtown witches have also claimed what you have after gods of your father's house have deducted an amount the small that is left is the one that you now remember us concerning transition you impress us it is the remainder after thieves have feasted on our portions that's what i came to realize because if this god is who he is why is the situation in the church like this if he is full not of many things just full of grace and truth full of truth and full of grace which would mean that there is resource to demonstrate every actuality of god every truth of god right as it were everything that rightly demonstrates the person of god there is resource to demonstrate it why is the situation of the church like this full of grace and truth that in god there is this endless plethora of things that are speaking in the accuracy of his spirit and then there is this cornucopia of endless resources full of grace so i take an accuracy i look for a resource that matches it right within the realm of god i demonstrate it the church wouldn't be like this we are in mockeries of theft yeah i'm coming to you don't worry i'm coming to you and that is why we must begin to think about the philistines and this is why i have brought you here today begin to think about philistia the kingdom of philistia because if you want to go to the historicity of it you shall see that the five cities of the philistines were situated along the coastline of the mediterranean so this was very prophetic because for you to come to israel you must pass through a sea uh-huh. you must pass through a sea assuming that you are coming from rome right assuming that your voyage set off from italy 
and we are learning you are you are allowed to go to your wikipedia and check where is rome where is italy what is the mediterranean sea eh? what is the western coastline of israel you can check these things we are in class that is your voyage is from an island called cyprus and you want to journey and come to the coastline of the holy land right you'd have to pass through philistia why because this sea that is called the mediterranean is the realm of Abiathar, right? So what we begin to do, I tell you, is to occupy the spaces that are adjacent to Abiathar so that whatever can come into the land, the holy land, would have to pass through us. Little wonder we are producing giants. That is why We are here talking about the kind of phone that Philistia was and is, was to the physical Israel and is to the spiritual Israel. Now that we are talking about the Gaza-Israel war, right? And the comments of the hawk-eyed damsel when she met the, the prime minister of Israel, the hawk-eyed damsel, that's her name in the spirit her reckless comments on the Gaza-Israel war. Because as long as we are handling that situation of a Philistia fast before the sea, then we'll have monies, even internationally, that should be directed to the Holy Land, that end up in the tunnels and the pits of terrorist enclaves that are in Gaza. I will not lose you. I am with you. Don't worry, we are going to a permanent, our permanent house. There will be water. There will be water. These have been the days of our pilgrimage. And our sorrows have been many. When you sip water, you can understand. When I'm teaching about the sea and you sip water. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I'm telling you what I'm saying begins to make sense. Are we together? Philistia is the nation. Philistia is the nation. And for you to begin to warm up yourself around the concept, please consider what the man of God is telling Timothy. That meditate on these things. One. Two. Give yourself wholly unto them. Right? Three. That your profiting may appear unto all. So there will be three dimensions. There will be the dimension of things, which is a bether, the father of abundance. Meditate on these things, right? Give yourself wholly unto them. The second dimension. You give yourself wholly unto them. The dimension that answers to your tentacles, the things that begin to bring you to the reality of that dimension. And then, that your profiting may appear. The third dimension is the appearance. So you are talking about a grace of prayer. It was a thing in the realm of God, right? Meditate on these things. Something that can enrich you. Something you can have. Meditate on this. Give yourself holy, right? Give yourself holy. And if it is you that you are talking about, then we are going to talk about a man. If there is a you factor, there is a man factor. So you must come to an effort system, an access system. Now there are things to meditate on. Think about how you can come to their accesses, right? That's why today you are in your bed in the morning. You could have stayed in your bed and remained there. But you chose to come to the house of God because you have to think about how to access the God that has given himself to you, right? You could have prayed at home and God would still have heard you but not answer you. He can hear you. 
but not answer you. Praying amidst six duvets. He can hear. He has never been deaf. But what about the response? The response is here, right? When you take initiative to come to the transaction of those things. So you come to where he is. Give yourselves wholly unto them, right? That your profiting may appear. The last dimension. That finally, what was in the realm of God has appeared among men. Might appear unto all. I'm talking about the dress I was asking the Lord for, right? It was in the realm of, you're looking at me as though you've never asked for a dress. You've never prayed to ask for a dress. Wow. That's how responsible he has been. He has never allowed you to fast for three days to pray for a dress. So you are there asking for it. It's a mystery in the realm of God. It's a glory, right? Then it leaves that place and comes to an altar. Give yourselves wholly unto them. Attend to the affairs of the altar. And then it will appear. There are three dimensions. So the point of giving yourself wholly unto them is the place of the prophetic. It is the midwife. It is the space betwixt those two spaces. So what the Philistine will do is that he will establish a presence between Abiathar and the manifestation. So that what is coming is not present in the realm of access. It is loot, right? In the hand of a thief. It is not a possibility in the dimensions of prayer. It has become spoiled in the hand of a thief. Right? Don't worry. Listen to this to understand what I'm saying. First Samuel chapter 5 from verse 1. What do we see? That as soon as we have stolen the ark of the covenant, we shall go and put it in our temple. Now I want to tell you something. There are never two temples. Because we never mention the temple of the Philistines until we have mentioned the desolation of the temple of the children of Israel. So the realm was one. The realm was one. Because look at Hannah. She is appearing to all. Right? When she is in her husband's house. Then she goes to the realm of prophetic reception. Right? Which was in Shiloh. That is where the temple was. Right? And then when she is in Shiloh, the wealth that is in God, because he says that children are gifts from the Lord, right? The wealth that is in God called children are unleashed for her need. She gets a child. So she is in the temple. She is led by a priest that is called Eli. And through that transaction, she is able to get a baby. I'm saying God is rich in children because he is the Lord God of hosts. Right? He is a father of many spirits. He has many children. How will I give Hannah a child? Hannah will leave her home. Right? In Ephraim. And come and tarry at my temple. When you tarry at my temple, you have come into the dimensions of prophetic starrings, right? Because my house shall be called the house of prophetic starrings. When you are there, the wealth that is in God can now be transferred from God into your realm. And then, when she went back home, right? Clearly, talk to me, her profiting was able to appear to, was able to appear to, to all, right? Was able to appear to all. And this is what we are saying. That if we have Hophni and Phinehas in Shiloh, the temple will turn from being a temple of the children of Israel and become a temple of the Philistines that we are talking about in 1 Samuel chapter 5. The temple is now the temple of Philistines. It's not a temple of the children of Israel. It is the same temple. 
It is Shiloh converted into a temple of the Philistines. Now within that cadre of reality, now the Ark of the Covenant of God is now flanked by Dagon's, right? There is Dagon, the other god in the church, because you have made it a den of thieves, therefore your god is covetousness, right? That is the Dagon coming to you. The people that are serving are no longer the children of Israel because they have become such a brood of vipers, such as the Pharisees, that their identity is now Philistine. So it is the Philistines that are serving in the temple that will come and see Dagon fallen on the earth, right? And set him up again, come the following day in the morning, only to find his head broken and the palms of his hands against the threshold. Against the threshold. Oh, who is getting what I'm saying here? Yeah. So now, this is Philistia for you. That we have the Ark of the Covenant here. Because it is the signature of provision. If we have the Ark of the Covenant, we have all things because God gives what he has covenantally. All right? God gives what he has covenantally. So if you have the Ark of the Covenant, we have all things. A beather is with us here. But we are thieves. Why are we thieves? Because though we have a God dimension, we have lifted our own God. Right? And it got juicer. Because when Dagon fell, he fell with his face toward the ground. So the first assignment of a thief is to transfer face. The assignment of a thief is to transfer face. Their face will become my face. Right? Their face will become my face. So, they are supposed to be driving in with two Lexuses, right? One for the husband and the other one for the wife. You know, the two shall become one until the days of, of car opulence. In the day of car opulence, the two are hardly one, right? The father is the first to leave the household, going for church, then the mama, right? Then the 19 and a half year old son following, everybody with their car. That is supposed to be their face. Your face is that people in the compound are supposed to be complaining that you are swallowing up all the parking lots. There was a man that was living, I don't know whether he has shifted. They had three cars and they brought a lot of commotion in the compound because we, he doesn't know where to park his cars now. They are just multiplying. And I get very worried when somebody next to me is thriving in such a dimension, sorry. Huh? Knowing that the realm is not just a realm of hard workers, <laughs> it is also a realm of, of thieves. I'm talking Usema. <laughs> it's also a realm of thieves. Do I, do I wish people well? I do. But I'm also not ignorant of the enemy's devices. Anyway, I think you've not seen those things. You still have time to, to grapple with these realities. Are you following me? That is supposed to be your face. Ah. Your face is uh -huh, this phone, the other phone. You know that, that joke for, for a Luo pin? You know Luo pins? Eh? They don't know which phone is ringing. So, no. iPhone 14, iPhone 15, 13. Which figure? Is it 13 or 14 that is ringing? That is supposed to be your face. But they rob the face. Are you seeing that? They rob the face. By subverting that resource flow. Number two, the palm of the hands, that's a scripture I loved, the palm of the hands was broken 
and the head. All right? Are you seeing that? Um, against what? The threshold. Against the threshold. So now they came. What is the prophetic space? The prophetic space is the threshold. That is wire. Why a threshold? And I remember reading this and asking myself many questions back in the day. Why a threshold? Because when the co covenant that was carried by the Ark of the Covenant released supply, it came to the threshold. Right? What is the threshold? The place that received the providence that came with the Ark of the Covenant. So Dagon had put his hands there. So that when this matter would come, when these graces would come, when these provisions would come, Dagon would receive what is meant for the children of Israel and disappear with it. Where did the holiness of Phinehas and Hophni go? Their holiness, where did it go? It was stolen. It came down. Why? Because it is a gift. It's called the gift of righteousness. And gifts are supposed to live the realm of the father of light and come down to the spaces of the men that are waiting for those gifts. So if righteousness is a gift, it means that somebody can make a way with it. Their holiness was stolen because a deacon had put the hands at the threshold. And you have to go to John chapter 12 to understand what is going on. Because if you go into John chapter 12, you realize there was another Philistine inside the camp of Jesus. His name was Judas, right? Now he is there. He's making an argument for 300 pence of the ointment that is being used to anoint Jesus for the burial. And say, this should have been sold, right? And the money given to the poor. This is he said. This he said. Not because he minded the poor, right? But because he was a give it to me, he was a what? He was a thief. So anything that is in the dimension of robbery will affect your mindset. So robbery will continue as long as our mindsets are warped. If your mind can be disenfranchised, robbery will continue. Because there can't be a thief without a way of thinking. And his thiefery is actually uh, propped. It is supported by your willingness to continue thinking erroneously. If you can continue missing it in the way you look at things, their thiefery will continue. If you are not asking yourself questions, there is a paradigm to ensure that you remain under the jurisdiction of a thief. Because this thief was thinking differently. You're saying that money should have been put under my charge so that I help myself with it. He was voicing his opinion because to keep you under his authority, right? Under the manipulation, under the robbery, he would have to sell a way of thinking. So we are here to ask ourselves questions, right? How come God, as we said in the beginning, can feed a nation with quails from the four winds of the heavens, causing quails to come from the way of the sea to feed a nation. And I am sleeping hungry. You need to ask yourself the question. You need to probe so that you can break out of a paradigm. Because if we have broken the hands that were at the threshold, receiving what was meant for us, our head is also broken. I tell you, if we would have broken the head, would have disarmed the hands. To frustrate the hands, break the head. Start thinking differently. And you begin to, I tell you, to dissipate the ministry of the hands. The hands can lose their authority over what you have if you begin to think differently. You must ask yourself the right questions. The ones I was asking myself not very long time ago. God, how wise are you? And what is the measure of my wisdom against your wisdom? How much spirit do you have? Ask yourself those questions. So that God can take advantage of the fact that you are inquiring to begin to give you revelation. God will use the premise 
of your probing to begin to supply you with the kind of insights that are necessary to reclaim the effort that you don't have. If you'll come back to provision, you came back to a mindset. If you'll stay in supply, you are upholding a thinking system. If you stay in supply, you are upholding a thinking system. See how the head is broken alongside the hands. See how the hands were carefully sculpted by the makers of Dagon to ensure that anything that comes from the Ark of the Covenant, from the dimension of Ebeda, father of abundance, is received into the wrong hands. And Dagon would walk out, right? And come because they were coming back in the morning. So they would come in the morning and receive everything that the ark downloaded and disappear. Down there, we have men that are in debt, right? We have men that are distort, discontent. We have men that are, they are in distress. So distress, discontentment, and in debt. Honey, how did you memorize those three words? And the way I've kept you well at home. Debt, discontentment, and... <laughs> kinds of scriptures that your wife is memorizing can tell us how you are keeping them at home. Discontent, distress, <laughs> and <laughs> in debt. Are you following me? Folks are in debt in Israel. In the day of David, folks were in debt. Saul was leading an army that is completely discontented. Folks are going to fight and there is no food. We don't know whether they are fasting because there are no sheep to eat or what the problem is. How can you wield a sword and you are fasting? Is it that there are no cattle in Israel to feed the army? What exactly is going on in Israel? But now we have actually a preview into this issue because we are seeing hands at the threshold to receive everything that is being downloaded by the Ark of the Covenant. Thievery in the house of God. That's why if it is Obadiah that is prophesying, Obadiah 1.5, he must see the ministry of thieves in Israel. Oh, I came to prophesy in the name of Jesus Christ that our perspective in the matter, our view of what is going on will not leave out thieves. A thief is in the detail. A thief is in the detail. Yeah. That is why our lot is like it is. Yeah. Honey, you are going to forget that scripture completely. Next time you're, you're the one that will be asking me that sequence, debt, <laughs> discontent, and distress. Because of the way the Lord will begin to remember his people. Bwana kumbuka mtume. Kumbuka mtume. We are now at Kila. First Samuel chapter 23. We are now at Kila. When we now began to visit and tour the realms of Kila. In first Samuel chapter 23. We saw it as it is. Because the Philistines are robbing, right? Uh, the threshing floors. It's an explanation of first Samuel chapter Five, they are here stealing from the spaces of provision. In other words, you go to the field, right? Because it is the field, the realm of abundance, then the threshing floor, the realm of the prophetic, right? And then households, the realm of appearances and manifestations. I'll go to the field, I will plant. How do I plant? Through relationship. Because the father of abundance is a father. So the way to step into abnormal divine provision is through relating with God as a father. You see that? So if God is your father, you'll be provided for. Kama nisaja, kamana rent bado ikonashida. But when he becomes a father, the father is always a father of abundance. Ah, he's always a father of abundance in the name of Jesus Christ. Eh, hey, hey. And that's why the prodigal son will think about a house that has so much that even the servants have a turn to spare. Because that household is not the household of a master. It is the household of a father. That's why he can come back to supply. Father of abundance, right? The field. 
then you come to what? You come to the threshing floor. The threshing floor is where I'm standing right now. I say, take it in the name of Jesus. That's a threshing floor. Where I come, like I was just worshiping with mom as she was worshiping. And deliverance was happening. I was seeing things being sorted in my life as I was worshiping with you. I enter the prophetic space of worship and deliverance happens. Right? How do I know that God was delivering you? Because he's delivering me. What is happening to the shepherd must happen to the sheep. Right? Because as you know, you say, you say, you say, you say, you say, even the man of God advised his son Timothy eh, that save yourself and your followers. I tell you. So that is a threshing flow where prophetic utterances and flows, right? And stirrings are happening to allow you to enter what God has for you, right? That's a threshing floor. And then the household, because after this you'll go home hmm? to your buffet. Is that so? Yeah. To the porridge you left, because you left your gas on, so that you'll not waste time warming porridge as soon as you, you get home. So you, you measured the gas, the heat. <laughs> eight hours, the way it can just continue doing its thing for eight hours. By the time you are back, you just pour warm porridge. You, you leave supply, you go to provision. That is our life in Jesus' name. We leave supply, we go to provision. From provision to provision. Just as we are moving from faith to faith. If we are going from faith to faith, it shall be from supply to supply. In the name of Jesus Christ. So now, we now must begin to come to Aquila. Aquila, where Philistines have come. And this is my, wow, this is my contention with us this day. Because in every church system, such as the church in Kenya, there will always be a killer. What is the killer in the detail? The killer is the bug. The bug that Jesus has that is carrying the contributions that he has received from the father of abundance. The one that Judas was targeting, the one that Judas was pursuing and putting his hand to bear its contents. That is killer, the bug. Because provision will not go everywhere fast. It will come to one place first and then it will go to other places. For us to have God everywhere, we'll have God in one place. For God to have revelation everywhere in this room, he put revelation on one man first. Please understand how God works. For God to save a nation, he will appear to a church first. That's why this church is called the capital church. That's why it is in the capital city. That's why even if you tell us we are going to pay rent punch, talk to me, in the Kimende, we can't go because we have to keep our footing at a dimension that is capitalized. Because if God can respond to a capital space, he can go to regional spaces. I prophesy. That is exactly how our God begins to operate. So he will come to a bag, then from a bag he will begin to fill their pockets. Do you know why he's telling them carry no pass? When you're going to ministry, because I am the one with the bug. The bug for now is only one. A day will come when I will send you to India, doubting Thomas. You're going to India, then you'll have a pass, because then you'll be the only element within that region. But as long as I am here, I am the one with the bug. Throw away your passes. <laughs> Throw away your passes. You have no capacity to attract divine provision. I'm the one that is attracting it. Your work is just to throw your hand inside the bag, right? As we are walking, you say, Jesus, I want br this bread that Naomi is cooking. Okay, bye. The bag is one. The portal of supply is with one person. And maybe that's where we need to come to as a church of this country, to begin to discern where the bag is. 
Now the church has been pushed into scarcity and poverty. Who is Kayla? Where is Kayla? Yeah. Where is Kayla? Because David is in his consecrations. And then he comes and he begins to hear that the Philistines have invaded Kayla and they rope the threshing floors. So I am here busy prophesying And some folks have positioned themselves to steal of my prophecies. I am here handling God. And the only way to have God, if you stole him from William, because William is the one that is mandated to handle God in that season. Huh? I am here handling portals of miracles. So that if we don't have miracles, it's not that God is not willing to work wonders in our midst. There are people that have stolen our portals of the miraculous. If your God is true, but he is not full of grace, your portals of grace have been stolen. If your God is full of grace and he is not overflowing in truths, your portals of truths have been stolen. Check where the thief has found occasion to take what belongs to you. Kill at the back, I tell you. They have invaded Kila. That's why we are here. To rebuke the enemy on his face. In the name of Jesus Christ. This will fly in his face. Because he has invaded Kila. And has begun to steal from the threshing floor. I'm here, I'm saying receive. Right? There's somebody else that has thrown a blanket over us. Whatever is coming down to us words. Is received by another net. A net of an evil day and pulled away from us to enrich them. So the, the more I prophesy, the more a thief becomes glorious. The more I labor, I tell you, the more the robber cruises in provision, the more I strive, the more the children of the strange woman strengthen their dominion. Because we are here working out the comfort of the thief. We are here laboring Yet at the end of the day, it is a thief that is taking it home. That the man is a man of prayer. 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 And wives like asking questions. Young man, you know why you want to get married? Because you don't mind being asked questions. After you have prayed for seven days, and the heavens are still shut as in the day of Elijah. She will come and ask you, they have this very poignant, sharp questions that are asked out of season. Out of season. It was, give me children or I die. Then the man of God asked, am I in God's stead? Am I in God's? How many times have we, have we had to tell that to our, our wives? Are we in God's stead? Are we in God's? Am I in God's? Am I in God's stead? I tell you. Na ishida. We unola. Si tu kwa apa tuna shanga apa moja. Si tu shanga apa. Why have you turned on me to ask me when the situation will? <laughs> the situation will change. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm coming to you. Hmm? The sorrows of killer. How I, I I should be having it, but it is my enemy that has it. And how they have what they don't have. What, how I should be having it, but it is my enemy that has it. And how they have what they don't have. They have what they don't have capacity for. They laid hold of things that they were never schooled for. Because they just came by systematic robbery. They never came through qualification. They never came through promotion. 
Because they were taking them away from people that deserved them. They were stealing them away from portals that were meant for them. What if God came one day and told you that all the prayers you've ever prayed concerning this issue have answered? But you look around your life, there's nothing that looks like an answer. In regard to that issue, nothing. How did you answer? Tell me, Lord, how did you answer? I did answer. I sent it. But whatever the Father of Lights will release must come down. If it is going to come down, it is going to pass through spaces and dimensions. And if the generation has raised a thief, then we are at odds. Today I came to, to secure thee. Today I came to contend for your exemption from the ministry of thieves in the name of Jesus Christ. I tell you, you are liberated. I tell you, you are liberated in the name of Jesus Christ from the ministry of thieves. Be free. Right? A, I tell you something. That God, that soul is very jubilant on the prospect of having a killer. That if Jesus is just walking around, all right, a, and eateth where he will find himself, and sleepeth where he will find himself, all right, that is disadvantageous to Saul. Saul will be excited the day he will say, this is the bag for the money, and you are the keeper of the bag. Because a Jesus that never had a betrayer suddenly has a betrayer. A Jesus that was never robbed from suddenly has a thief in his space. Because if you centralize the money, we can centralize the haste. If you can have a bug, we can have an institution attached to the bug. Because if David has gone to kill her, Saul is very excited, right? And saying, now he will not escape my hand because surely he has gone into a city that has gates and bars. Now what if you are going to have a bug, there are rules to that bug. There are laws that surround the handling of a bag of money. It is what color is it, right? It is where did you buy it from? If it's a bag of money, right? Which other hands have access to it? Where do you put it when you're offloading it? What times does money come into this bag? When it is an institution, we can sit to the institution and study the flows and study the porosity and see how to undermine the institution. Jesus now has a betrayer because money has a bug. Because there is now a treasurer in the ministry of Jesus. Saul is excited that finally you are at killer. Because now that city has gates and it has bars. Yeah, yeah, it has bars. What are the gates and what are the bars? Because of Exodus chapter 22. In Exodus chapter 22, what you have is that from verse 1, you can check it out. That there he began to tell them that if a thief steals, if a man, a thief, steals, right? Sheep or oxen and he kills it or he sells it. So now we know that fox that steal steal so that they can kill or they can sell. Earlier on I thought, fox I thought, that they only stole in order to sell. I had no idea that they can also steal in order to kill. In other words, what we don't have capacity for we will decimate. Right? We will steal everything. What we can't handle, we will decimate. For instance, when they began to come to my heavens, they were stealing things. I tell you, they stole this, they stole that. But they, were, they tried to handle the prophetic. That one couldn't be stolen. <laughs> they couldn't steal the prophetic. I'm telling you about our time on the other side. 
You remember? You were at the back praying for me, saying, Papa, help Papa. Is that so? <laughs> it was thievery. But then they realized that this prophetic dimension, you can't steal it. So let us kill it. They were attacking it, wanting to remove it, because it can't function as a spoil inside their flows. If it becomes a loot, they can't flow in it. So let us kill it. But anything else that you can do and I do, do it. So that you will think that you are not fasting. But it is graces that are being stolen from you. You will think that your prayer life has begun to diminish. That's when you are not in that worship dimension that you used to be in. But what is actually going on is that what you should be having is being put on another person. Gates and bars. Should a man steal an ox or a sheep? Read your Bible. What is an ox? A bar. Right? Because the Bible says, Thou hast strengthened the bars of our gate. Because it is oxen that are strong to labor. It is oxen that are strong to labor. The strength for it. And the sheep, the gate. Because it is the blood of a lamb, three years old without blemish, whose blood was taken. And a high soap was used to apply the blood on the lintels. So if you can have a blood out of a lamb, you can have an opening. Right? You can have an opening. So he has gone into a city that has gates and bars. In other words, there, there's already a system to steal the ox and to steal the sheep. There's already a system on ground as long as he has chosen to institutionalize his financial ventures. If there's an institution, there's also an institution. Eh? If there's an institution, there's also an institution. If the bug is what it is, a bug that is labeled donations to the ministry of Jesus. Judas is also a man labeled the betrayer, right? If Kila is a city that you can come to to contend for your wealth, to stay there to contend for your wealth, it is a city with gates and it is a city with, with bars. Hey. My goodness. Man. Who is following what I'm saying here? Anybody still with me? You're not at home eating lunch. You're still here. Right? That would be amazing. <laughs> Hallelujah. I came to prophesy. Because he said, if the thief of the ox is caught, he shall restore fivefold. If the thief of the sheep is caught, they shall restore fourfold. I came to prophesy restoration. I prophesy your restoration in the name of Jesus. I say I prophesy your restoration in the name of Jesus Christ. The theft is in the prophetic interplay. And that's why the Philistine is at Kila. Because at Kila, that is where we have the threshing floors. How so? I got an amazing revelation, honey. Because we see that when Jesus does not have money to pay for, for taxes, huh? some denarii, he doesn't have money. What will he do? He will send to the sea. He will send Peter to the sea to go and fish. Because the money is inside the mouth of a fish. You know why, how it got there? I saw it. You know how it got there? Can I give you that revelation? Because Dagon is a fish god. Dagon is a fish god. So when the money was being stolen by this Philistine called Judas in the camp of Jesus, it was going to a fish god that is called Dagon. Actually, scholars agree, and you can check it out, that when you look at uh, the sculpting necessary and available for how Dagon was looking like, I think he's the first image of a mermaid. That he has a mouth that looks human, but the rest of his body, I think the torso is pseudo-human, but then the rest of his body is fish. It's like a mermaid. It's a fish god. So when they were staying there and stealing through Dagon, in the realms of the spirit, what was happening is that money was disappearing into a fish. So if Jesus doesn't have money, because money has been stolen, money was stolen. 
How is it that he does not have money to pay for taxes? He doesn't have money to keep his ministry running. It's not that God has forgotten him. It's not that ministry is normally hard. It's just that convince people to give is normally difficult. I mean, the people of this generation, you give them revelation, you pray for them, eh? you love on them. What haven't you done to them? On Wednesday, you text them, you tell them you love them. Yeah, people have revelation, they are loved, they are taught how to pray, they are taught how to quote. Malizane, you give them a green light to fall in love, and you teach them how to fall in love so that there is love in the ministry. There's nothing you have not done, and those people are not giving. So we are there saying, hey, by the first three years of a ministry's lifespan are very, very difficult when you are trying to break through. You know, you're trying to break through. So you say, hey, why did you missing, why did you miss a meeting yesterday? You know, things can be tough. And then they tell you, the, the bridge said when things are tough, the tough gets, gets going. So it is toughness that is going. It is not the mercy of God. It is not the kindness of the Father of abundance that is going. It is toughness that is getting going. And we are there deceived, forgetting that should Dagon fall, his head should also be decapitated, right? Because we were taught to think through a compromised system so that we can be deceived out of what we rightfully own. Is that so? Yeah. So we are there saying ministry is hard. Ministry is not hard. It is a thief that is in the ministry. It is a thief that is inside the heavens of the ministry that we begin to prophesy. I remember when the Nzige, that season when the Nzige was getting married, married, buried, married to the soil, buried, right? Was getting buried. I remember seeing a casket in the heavens of the church. And I was wondering, what is this casket doing? The casket is positioned so that we can have a thief that is killing. Because remember, what he doesn't have capacity for, he will kill. He will not just sell, uh, he will kill. Imagine stealing to kill, because a thief cometh but to steal, to kill and to destroy. So killing and destroying are cousins. So what I can't keep or what will sell me out, what will manifest me overtly as a thief, I destroy. So they don't discern that I'm stealing from them. I tell you. Leo nilikuja kwa ubiria mambo ya uwizi. Bwana nisaidie bwana. Samo ni leo ni ya uwizi. How somebody can put a casket in your heavens to steal what you should have and not to keep it or to enterprise it but to end up killing it. That's what you're talking about. And that's why you must understand that the things that I preach to you they are not theories. They are not things that I'm picking from wherever. I leave these sermons, I leave them. They are part of my work. I see them every day. On Friday, I was just in my house and I began to hear theft. I was hearing it, theft, on Friday. Theft, theft. I managed to ignore it a bit. And then I went to ask God, what do I talk about on Sunday? Because I got this word on. Then also, 1 Samuel chapter 23. I just read the first statement out of the second verse. And I'm like, wow, all right, here we are. Sibari. Fox, Sibari. On the threshing floor. This is where we shall finish. But if you are talking about the prophetic, we must begin to talk about an ox and a sheep. Because everything you will work, right? Everything that you'll make to appear, everything that you will facilitate a manifestation for, will place a demand for a strength and an access. A strength and an access, yeah. I came to free every strength that has been stolen from you. You have never been weak, just that we have robbers of strength. We have, ne we have never been without grace. Just that there are people that are positioned to rob grace from our spaces. We have never been without doors and accesses. Just that there are people that were positioned to go away with our doors. Uwizi wa milango. The robbery of doors. Right? That somebody will come and steal a ship and go away with it. So that when it is time to step out, when it is time to change a land, when it is time to warm up to the dictates of a season, 
There is no way to step up to the plate. There is no way to actually apprehend the spirit of a season because the door to that expression is missing. Somebody ran away with it. They will restore today for an ox, five oxen. I said for a sheep, four sheep. For an ox, five oxen. For a sheep, four sheep. I prophesy. I say I prophesy in the name of Jesus. Because the anointing that is coming upon you today is the anointing that was upon David to respond to the Philistines in the name of Jesus Christ. He says he sealed them with a great slaughter. The slaughter of the day was a great slaughter. Can you imagine a slaughter that gives us the heads of thieves? Can you imagine a capacity to dissipate that has come upon us so that we can render judgment upon thieves. The Bible says, and he took their cattle. In other words, the transactions were reversed. He took their cattle. I prophesy, he took their cattle. If you stole an ox, I'm taking your cow. If you stole my sheep, I'm taking your cattle because a sheep must be restored four times, right? Take a sheep times four becomes a cow, right? So I'm taking your cattle in the name of Jesus Christ. Whatever you stole, <laughs> I tell you, whatever you stole, I am taking a turn for recompense in the name of Jesus Christ. Today we are crying for restitution. Hey, we are here to ask for restitution. In the name of Jesus, you return the thing that you stole from us. In the name of Jesus Christ, we slay with a great slaughter. We take away the cattle of the thieves. We cut off Philistia from the realm of killer. We cut off the Philistines from the realm of killer. I say we cut off, I tell you, we cut off the Philistines from the realm of killer. In the name of Jesus Christ, we will stand the Philistines. Leave our threshing floors. I say leave our threshing floors. In the name of Jesus, release the portals that became our threshing floors. In the name of Jesus, we respond by fire at this invasion of thieves. In the name of Jesus, we stand strong upon our ground. We decry the invasion of thieves. In the name of Jesus, today I came to anoint you. Say, I came to anoint you in the name of Jesus. I came to anoint you in the name of Jesus Christ to have a Davidic unction upon your head eh, to slay your thief with a great slaughter. To slay your thief with a great slaughter in the name of Jesus and to go home with cattle. I prophesy, spoil for this afternoon out of all thievery that has happened in our lives. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are spoiling the spoiler. I tell you, we are taking away from the one that took away from us. We are possessing out of the one that usurped our possession. In the name of Jesus Christ, let the house of Jacob begin to possess its possession this afternoon. Reclaim it in the name of Jesus. Now you have the dominion. Take it back from the thief. Take it back from the thief. In the name of Jesus, I say, take it back. I say, take it back from the thief. 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 In the name of Jesus, take it back. In the name of Jesus, take it back. In the name of Jesus, take it back from the thief. Oh, hallelujah. I want us to be on our feet and pray. Ask for restitution. He says, whom the heavens must receive until the time of the restitution of all things. There comes a time when the thief gives back what they have stolen. They can't keep loot forever. In the name of Jesus. Just open your mouth and ask for restitution. Ask for restitution. Ask for restitution. Ask for restitution. Oh, hallelujah. Ask for restitution. Ask for restitution. 
restore the thing that you have stolen from me. My relationships, strategic relationships that were stolen, restore them now in the name of Jesus. Hey, strategic relationships that were stolen, restore them now in the name of Jesus. Openings into millionaireship that were shut up, restore them now in the name of Jesus. Restore them now. Restore them now. Restore them now. Restore them now in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, oh hallelujah. Restore them now in the name of Jesus. Restore them now in the name of Jesus Christ. Restore them now in the name of Jesus. Come on, just flow. Restore them now in the name of Jesus. Restore everything. Restore everything. Restore the grace. Restore the money. Restore the house. Restore the car. Restore the utterance. Restore the wisdom that was usurped. Restore the manifestation that was cut off. Let everything that the thief took come back to you. Everything that the thief took, let it come back. Oh, let it come back. Let it come back. Let it come back to you. 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 Everything, everything. The opportunities that were stolen. The intellect that was stolen. Did you hear what I said? The intellect that was stolen. Let it come back to you. The mindsets that were scattered by the hand of the thief. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let them come back. Let them come back in the name of Jesus. Let them come back in the name of Jesus. Let them come back in the name of Jesus. Let them come back in the name of Jesus. Hey, there is restoration. There is restoration in the name of Jesus. Hey, there is restoration in the name of Jesus Christ. The thief is silenced. The thief is cut off. The thief is commanded to return everything that they took. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. If you can just mention specific things that were stolen in the presence of God today. Specific things that were stolen in your life. You know it was stolen. A relationship was stolen. A partnership was stolen. Clients were stolen. I tell you. Opportunities to go abroad were stolen by thieves. Witches that are thieves took away your advantage. I tell you, the edge that was taken away by the thief, it is time, it is time, it is time. It is time in the name of Jesus. It is time in the name of Jesus to cry out, to cry out, to rebuke the thief, to tell the thief off, to cast them out from the spaces of your threshold, to cast them out from the spaces of your threshold. In the name of Jesus, cast them out from the places of your threshold. Hey, in the name of Jesus, Cast them out from the spaces of your threshold. Uh, hey, cut them off, cut them off, cut them off. Cut them off from the spaces of your threshold. In the name of Jesus, theft is scattered. 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 The men that are above me, that are stealing from me, the people that took advantage of my submission unto them, to steal from me in the name of Jesus. Right now I cry out. 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 The thief is expelled from my openings in the name of Jesus. The thief is silenced from the spaces of my manifestation. In the name of Jesus. Oh, I labor, I labor at it. Oh, Lord, I labor at it. We renounce the ministry of the thief. In the name of Jesus, we renounce the ministry of the thief. Our agreement with hell is annulled. Our covenant with death is scattered. In the name of Jesus. Come on, in the name of Jesus Christ. What did they steal from you? What did they take away from you? It's time to get it back. It's time to get it back. It's time to lay hold of it and get it back for yourself.